think it's coming. That's not my message, but it sure is. It surely is. The king is coming. And you're going to bow now. Or are you going to bow later? I'm going to just say that again. You're going to bow now. Hallelujah. Willingly. Hallelujah. You're going to give up your life right here, right now. Hallelujah. If you try to save it, you're losing it again. So now is the time to bow because the king is coming. He's coming. And he's coming sooner than we think. He's coming. And he's coming swifter than we realize. The king is coming. Come on, and he's coming faster. Come on, and he's coming with a sword in his mouth. Come on, the king is coming. My God, my God. He's coming. He's coming, and the bride must make herself ready. Ooh, child. Ooh, child. Y'all go ahead and take this. Let's move into this word. Hallelujah. But the king is coming. I'm telling you, that thing hit my belly this morning. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't for me knowing, I realized that it was other people in the room. But I, I swear, I stretched out on that floor a little bit. My God, because the king is coming. Yes. And that thing is real in my soul. It's real down in my soul. And he said to me, he said, prepare the people. Hallelujah. Prepare the people for the coming king. Because the king is coming. And we have a responsibility, hallelujah, as pontificators of this word to prepare the people, hallelujah, for the coming of the king. In other words, how to receive the king. What is the kingdom protocol? See this? We all understand how important it is that we prepare yeah. to receive the king. Listen, yeah. when, uh, when a government official is about to come into a new uh -huh. nation, there is time they go through training yeah. to receive the king, my God, or to receive the president. There is presidential protocols. Come on, there are kingly protocols. You can't just walk up to whoever the president is, whether you like him or not. You don't just get to walk up and give him, uh, tell him how you feel about him. And, you know, you don't get to do that. If you want to approach uh, Queen Elizabeth, she not even, she don't even rule anything for real. Hallelujah. She literally is just a queen in, in name only. She don't have no governmental uh, or executive powers, but you can't approach her any kind of way. You got to go through training. Come on. You got to go through preparation. You got to understand what is uh, uh, illegal and illegal. Come on. Before you can approach the queen. The king is coming. The king is coming. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Ooh, so part of this, part of this protocol, part of this preparation is to prepare people to receive the king. So while we are preparing a people, can I tell you that it's your responsibility to prepare your house to receive the king. To prepare your family to receive the king. And it's work and, 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 and there is warfare and there is there is process that has to be uh, 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 done in order for us to be able to receive him. Listen, uh, Esther went through one year of preparation time before she was able to just simply meet the king. Like one time. Like before, it, she didn't even know if she would even be chosen. Yeah, right on. Oh, God. Oh, God. But before she could even be put in the number to be chosen by him, to, to even be a, a one of the many women that were going to be in this pageant, she had to go through one year, and not just her, but all of them had to go through one year of preparation. And guess what it was? Purification. Come on, it was cleansing. They layered, Lord, help me, Jesus, Jesus. They layered. They, they first cleansed her, and then they began to layer scents upon her. My God. They had to put her, give her certain foods to eat in order to purify her from the inside out because they was working on every aspect of who she was in order to prepare her for the king. So by the time she got on her garments, she had already been washed from the inside. And then she had been washed and cleansed and perfumed on the outside. And a whole year of this process 
over and over again so that her very sweat, my God, probably smell like perfume. Come on, people. The king is coming. And the bride made herself by way of Holy Spirit leading and guiding by way of humility and dying to self and making a decision every single day that I'm going to die again another death to prepare me to receive the king hallelujah hallelujah well I'm supposed to be teaching about the whole warm up God amen that was good and this good stuff and we getting ready to get into it and um, I pray I get to the end because that's a lot alright 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 Let's go on to the first slide. We're on part four. Hallelujah of the whole armor of God. Amen. And we have uh, dealt with every aspect of the armor of God. Up until this point, we're down to uh, the verses 17 and 18. Uh, and I'm reading out the New King James. It says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. The W is silent, people. It's not a sword. I just need to say that. It's one of those pet, it's one of pet peeves I got. It's not a sword. It's a sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let's go to the next one. So we take, we're take we going to talk today about sozo, the sword, and prayer. Our salvation is more than our rescue from eternal damnation. Let me just say it one more time. Our salvation, what Jesus died for, okay, is more than just being rescued from eternal damnation. Okay? It is an all-encompassing full overthrow of evil from our earthly existence. That sounds lofty, doesn't it? Because we don't see the whole manifestation of a full overthrow of all evil from our earthly existence. We don't see it in our life, do we? Come on, we see it in certain aspects in our life. We gain, we got the victory over here, but we still struggling over there. Come on, am I right about it? Come on, we, 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 we got joy, but we also got pain. Hallelujah. We walking through this life with, you know, even though our life might be right, our cousin, our sister, our brother, they got some whole lots of issues and things going on. And we can still see evil permeating in their existence. Amen. Come on. You might you might be doing well in your finances, but somebody else over here, you got to lend, 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 because they suffering, suffering, suffering. Am I right about it? We don't see a full overthrow of evil from our earthly existence, but this is what Jesus paid for. And I know it's hard for us to believe it, but this is because we have been taught such a watered-down gospel. And the reason why we've been taught a watered-down gospel, and I'm getting way ahead of myself, is that the kingdom of God suffers violent, and the violent take it by force. What that really means is that you've got the war for your victory. Jesus did pay the price legally, but you got to get through a whole second heaven foolishness in order to, man to manifest that thing in the natural realm. And the saints got tired. The saints gave up. The saints started settling for the things that uh, you know, uh, was happening in their life, or they were ignorant. Come on, walking in darkness, believing lies. The Bible calls them doctrines of devils, where people were believing falsities concerning the work of the cross, and therefore they have relegated our wholeness to eternal life. Amen. So you can't get everything that God gave you uh, that Jesus paid the price for until you go six feet under. Oh, and so we have a, a labor just to endure. Come on. Come on. We're just suffering until uh, our great by and by. And the devil said, okay, let me just keep on putting my foot on their neck over here and over there. We not even realizing as the body of Christ what our true rights and privileges are as kingdom citizens. Matter of fact, it wasn't until probably, I would say 20 years ago, that any of us ever understood or even heard the idea.
idea of the kingdom of God manifesting in the earth realm. At least not in our lifetime. All we ex ex expected was Jesus to come and rescue us. Or for us to be called away to meet him in the air and be rescued. We didn't realize that some of this was going to come forth through the kingdom of God coming in and through us. Because Jesus is coming. <laughs> I ain't going to get in there too deep. <laughs> but the king is coming. Yeah. But guess what? The king is coming in you <laughs> before he comes to you. Yeah. I said the king is coming in you. Yeah. The whole of the kingdom of God yeah. resides on the inside of you. Hallelujah. The reason why you don't see the manifestation of it it's because you have a soul that is translating what is happening in the spirit into the natural. Mm. And your soul is a filter. Mm. Come on. Right. Your soul is filtering through your knowledge and your experience yeah. the things that the spirit knows well. Yeah. Come on. So the spirit says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But your soul have gone through what it's gone through and you've been hurting and you've been broken and you've had pain in your life and you've had disappointments and you have circumstances, thank you dear, you had circumstances and situations that have told you or tried to teach you that you can't have all things, all things for them, but not maybe, maybe not all things for me. Because every time I tried, then here came something that set me back. I don't know if I'm going to get to this. <laughs> but the truth is still the truth. So something's got to happen in your soul. Because let's go to the next slide. The root word in Greek for, for the New Testament salvation is sozo. It means to make well, to heal, to restore to health. To keep safe, to deliver one from the penalty of the messianic judgment. Now we agree with that. And to save from the evils which obstruct the reception of our manifest of the messianic deliverance. So to heal, to restore, and to deliver. To heal your broken heart. To restore means to bring it back to the place where it never had been broken. I said to bring it back to the place where it looks like it never had been broken. That's what restoration is. Restoration is not needed in heaven. Restoration is needed in the earth realm. Where you were stolen from, God wants to restore to you all things. So that, Job, you gave up all your family and you gave up all your money and you gave up all your wealth. But I'm going to restore to you double for your trouble. And he looked like, come on, in the end, his restoration was so complete that it looked like he never, ever missed anything. Yeah. Restoration is for the earth. This is part of your salvation. Oh, God. Deliverance. Not only from what you have warred with and had struggled with and these things that I'm teaching you. I'm teaching the book again, the, the Battle for, of Altars. And we talked about last week how that, you know, our restoration and, and, and God bringing our deliverance, you know, we understood based on what we've learned thus far that once we destroy the our Father's altars, come on, then deliverance can be received. Because we don't have to no longer run from the devil. Come on, deliverance, deliverance don't look like uh, the devil don't even have an access or a way in. We're not even having to run from him. Come on. We ain't got to just flee fornication. We have no desire for it. Not that we can turn into prudes, but that we are able to put our flesh under subjection until we can obey the Lord fully and rightly. Oh, God, help us today. Our deliverance is a part of our salvation. Not just 
waiting till we get to heaven to rejoice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No, no, no. Uh -uh. And it's going to it's gonna prove out because this body, come on, this bride is making herself ready. And there is a wholeness that God is releasing in this house that will resonate throughout the, the entire region and for some of us throughout the nation. And it's going to be so powerful and so anointed and so God, so much Jesus till people will see your light. People will see your shine. And they will want to know what must I do to be delivered? What must I do to be healed? Come on. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be healed, delivered, and set free? How can I have the victory that Jesus paid the price for? See, there's a whole section of the body of Christ who have sold Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection so cheaply and said that, you know, yeah, we just, we saved and now we're just going to live and be happy with one another and we're going to struggle and go through what we're going through and we are God's family and we're going to hug with one another when we're going through what we're going through, but they will not come against the enemy of their soul. And don't want a part of the deliverance, but you won't access the kingdom without passion. You might be a Christian, but you will not access the power of the kingdom of God and all of its other riches that he has provided to us without some warfare. You got to have a made up mind. Let's go to the next one. The lies of the enemy is to water down the truth of what Jesus actually paid for with his blood on the cross of Calvary and to make his disciples believe that we all gave, that, that what believe that all we gave from the cross was eternal peace in the afterlife. That is only a partial truth. The whole truth is this. There is more. Far more. Let's go to the next one. The first part of our armor is to have our loins girded or strengthened with truth, which deals with how we walk and what we stand on. Remember, we talked about the fact that you got to make a decision. We're not trying to be a, 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 a lukewarm in this thing. See, it's the lukewarm Christian that's getting their head towed off. It's the lukewarm Christian that don't have no victory. It's the lukewarm Christian that makes every kind of excuse for why their life is sideways and crazy and doesn't look any different than the world. Come on here. It's the lukewarm Christian. It, it's only when you get hot, burning for Jesus Amen. that things begin to shift in your life. And they begin to shift because you begin to make demands. Come on now. Yeah. Not on God, but you begin to tell the devil, shake loose yeah. of my stuff. Come on here. I will be healed. Come on. I am healed. I am delivered. Come on. I will have all that God prepared for me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to look at the scriptures and say, well, I see it, but it just don't make no sense. I don't understand it. No, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm getting ahead of myself again. I'm going to pray until God give me a revelation. And then I'm going to take that prophecy and I'm going to war with it. Come on. I'm going to take this word and I'm going to tie the devil's head off. I'm going to stand until I can't do no more, but stand. But I know that my victory is mine. So, the first part of our woman, which is to have our loins dirty, is about knowing who Jesus really is. Yes. It's about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Y'all have to go back and get that. We talked. But now, the helmet of salvation is about knowing who Jesus is in us. Amen. It's about knowing who we are in him. So, you got to first have the revelation of who he is. And then, once you understand who he is, you can begin to embrace who you are in him. Oh, y'all see how that works? He prays in the book of John, Lord, make them one as we are one. Because he understood who his father was. He was able to identify himself in that revelation. And the same way Jesus had to find himself in his father, so do we. We find ourselves in the word. Hallelujah. So 
So the helmet of salvation is about knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. What are all of our rights and privileges? What what are all of our rights and privileges truly are as disciples? Yeah. Too many R's in there, but I was typing kind of fast. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to the next one. However, we will not experience fullness in our salvation without taking up our sword. We have to lift up the word. So now we've identified what sozo is. Am I right? All right, we understand that it's more than just eternal life after this. Man. It is about eternal life right now, and everything that's not uh, for eternal eternal life gets shed off of us. We don't take a sick body to heaven. Come on, we don't take a weak mind into heaven. Hallelujah. We don't take broke, busted, and disgusted into heaven. We don't take lack and need into heaven. Come on, people. Listen, if, 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 if it's not in heaven, it shouldn't be in your life. That's the bottom line. If it's not in heaven, it shouldn't be in your life. It's no confusion. It's no lies. Come on. It's no, it's no anger in heaven. Hallelujah. Be angry, but see it not. Yeah. Listen, yeah. anger is an indication that there is a problem, just like pain. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not the place yeah. you sit in, my God, today. It's not the place you suck in. It's not the place that you linger in. Hallelujah. No, sir, the Bible says do not let anger, I mean, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. means you need to wrap it up. Yeah. Shut it down. Deal with it. Yeah. My God, today. The scripture tells us clearly that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. I will add that it starts as logos, which is just ink on paper. It's the written word. Logos means written words. The written word of God. And we know it's, it's solid. It's everything. You need no more. Hallelujah. We thank God for all of the commentaries. Every book that we read that's separate from the scriptures, that's about the scriptures, is a commentary. Amen? Right. <laughs> it's a commentary, but everything we need is in the book. And here's the thing. What we end up writing in our in our uh, books and manuals and training, memoirs and, and, and et cetera, et cetera, is the rhema, which, which, right. which means that it becomes the living word. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. It becomes flesh right. and, 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 and becomes a part of you. So the word, the ink on paper, have to become flesh and sing you to your bones. Amen? Yeah. It becomes strength to you. And when you act upon it, the more that you do, thank you, it becomes wisdom. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so how does that work? Because, because you have to, um, you gotta, we got to add faith to the mix, and I'm getting there in a minute. But the word that you read, I can do more. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But then the experience, because you take that word, you meditate on it, yeah. you know, and you think on that, you say, okay, Lord, I, I believe in your word that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Then a challenge arises. Come on here. Come on. Because this is how this works. Yeah. All right? Because walking in this earth realm is the classroom. Yeah, man. This is the yeah. classroom experience yeah. where you get to know God in a way that Come you on. never ever could apart from this experience. Literally, time is our classroom. Yeah. All right? And so now here comes your situation. Here comes your challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, are you going to take that word and war with it? And say, okay, God, if I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I thank you for a strategy. Because if you're strengthening me, then you're giving me the strategy, and you're giving me the temperament, and you're giving me the ability, come on, and you're giving me the access and favor, and you're giving me the open doors that I need in order to meet and beat this challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Or... You slip back over and start doing things the world's way. And you find some way to compromise. You find some way to cheat. You find some way to go around the thing. You don't stay in integrity. Come on, you don't stay on the high road. Come on, you try to make it be something that it's not, and you go sideways on God. Well, you just missed the lesson. And so now you, now you know what you did. And, and now you're saying stuff like, well, Lord, forgive me. I know I shouldn't have done such and such. 
But what you did was you missed your moment. You missed your opportunity for God to take you into the next level of your faith. You missed the opportunity for him to make that word go from being a words on page to being something added to your spirit man and added to your strength and added to your faith because the next time the de- listen the devil don't have new tricks he don't need them because you keep falling for the same old okie doke the same old stuff the same old thing at some point you ought to want to graduate from this little low level and step into the next level come on at some point the thing that used to tempt you ought not keep tempting you 10, 15, 20 years later because you won't apply the word of God. This is your armor against the devil. Yeah. This ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. We 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 talk about our whole armor yeah. so that we can. The Bible says that we can uh, fight against the wiles or strategies yeah. Yeah. of the devil. But he keep whooping us with the same stuff yeah. because we won't turn. Amen. Yeah. We won't change our mind. We won't agree with the word of God. Listen, the word is always right. And I'm always either right because I'm in the word or I'm wrong. Ain't nothing in, ain't no gray. Ain't no gray, ain't nothing in the middle. There is no excuse. There is no compromise. The word is right. The word is right. I'm going to just say that aloud over here on the other side. The word is right. Period. And either I have added up or I have not. Come on. But I can because His grace is sufficient for me. And His mercies are fresh and new every morning. And they endure forever. So I have an opportunity every single day to get right. We must take the word at face value and believe it with our whole hearts enough to use it in our daily life because most of the time we mentally assent that the word is right but we don't believe it we will it's so many people this is the reason why so many so many people in america say they're christians but they they not I'm, i ain't no other way to say it they they're not real christians they're not real christians they go to church they probably got pastors too they pastors might not even be saved. Wow. I mean, this is a serious thing. This is real life. I mean, because if you're not walking the word, you're not obeying the word. If if if, if marriage is between one man and one woman, yeah. and this is what the Bible says is very clear, and Jesus Jesus said it. He laid it out. You know, I ain't talking about Old Testament. I'm talking about what Jesus said. You know, and if you go, you gonna switch that around, and then you gonna say, not only do we agree with you, we gonna ordain you too. That's not God. That, you're not, you're not saved. You're not a true Christian. Amen. Come on. It's a pseudo Christian. It's, it's a, Antichrist is not against Christ. It is a false Christ. It's false Christianity. It's not real. I didn't write the book. I'm just telling you what it says. I don't know. Only as we apply the word to our everyday existence does it change us and the world that we live in. How does it change the world that we live in? Because the more that we are changed, we are we are the mustard seed of faith that goes and gets planted into environments. And because of who we are, that thing begins, that, that faith begins to spread out. Come on. And people around you begin to get infected with faith. Hallelujah. They begin to get infected with truth. They begin, listen, you can't go into an environment and, and, and live the truth and speak the truth and it not affect those around you. Impossible. Impossible. If you're a secret Christian on your job, then you need to rethink your Christianity. Because if God is as good as as we know that He is, how can you keep him? A, how can you keep him a secret? How can you not tell? If it is you got all peace and all joy, and folks in your and folks all around you is 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 tripping, going through all kind of drama, all kinds of issues happening in their life, and you don't have an answer for their soul. How is that possible? You don't have answers. You don't have the, 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 the understanding. You don't have nothing that you want to give to them. Come on. Come on. Even if you don't know how to say it, baby, they make all kinds 
the little books that you can go hand to somebody. That is a way to be a witness. And it's impossible for me to believe that you truly are locked in to God and he is locked in to you and you not be able to share the gospel at some level. At some level. You might not be a preacher. You don't have to know the Greek or Hebrew, but there is no way you can know him for real and not give him away. It's impossible. I'm convinced it's impossible. It's impossible. Not if you really have tasted. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Okay. The word must be mixed with faith. Yeah. That means we must act on it. Yeah. Doing the word heals, delivers, and restores our souls. Yeah. Hearing only is self-deception. Let's go to the next one. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, talking about the Jews. Oh, let's go to the next one, baby. You got to listen to the sermon, bro. <laughs> For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, talking about the Jews. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Come on, some of us. I hate to say it, some of us in the room, at some point in time in our life, the word didn't profit us. Because we did not mix, it said not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. I didn't write it. I'm just, I'm just a reporter. Come on. Come on. I'm just the deliverer of the message. You can sit here. Week after week after week after week after week after year after year after year and find yourself 10 years down the road, no better off, no more strengthened, no more healed, no more changed because you did not mix what you heard with faith. How do you mix it with faith? By acting on it. This word means nothing. If you don't mix it with faith. Let's go to the next one. This is James 1, 22 through 25. We heard it. I, I just felt like I want to read the whole thing in context. It says, but be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Yeah. For he observes himself. See, you sit here and you listen, and God is telling you who you are. Yeah. He is telling you what he's called you to. Yeah. He is telling you all that he has uh, paid the price for you to receive. He said, for you observe of himself, and then goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So you just forgot everything God ever said about you. Yeah. You forgot everything, every instruction. You let it go in one ear and out the other. You didn't take no notes. You didn't take no heed. You didn't take no grip on. You didn't hold. You didn't grasp it. Come on, it's just like bouncing off your forehead. <laughs> He says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, which is what this gospel is, it's the perfect law of liberty because why? It brings you freedom. Yeah, yeah. Freedom from the bondages yeah. of this life. Yeah. Come on, freedom from all of the struggles and all of the striving. Come on, freedom. It is the uh, perfect law of liberty. Yeah. It says, and continues in it. He that looks into it and continues in it. Meaning you got to continue in this word. You got to all you got to keep pressing into it. Did I say you won't make a mistake? No. Did I say you won't make a wrong decision? No. But you still have to decide that you're going to continue to pursue your deliverance. Continue to pursue your freedom. Continue to pursue he said, and he is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. You got to not just do the hear the word, but you got to do the work. Oh, 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 Miss Ayana Vincent made, or whatever her name is, she made that phrase very popular. You got to do your own work. 
Yeah, you do have to do your own work except for you can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it in your own strength. And some things, honey, psychology not going to re re resolve for you. You need the word of God. It's spiritual, baby. It's deeper. My God today is second heaven deep. My God, it's generational comes deep. Come on, you got to deal with the issue for real. There is a work to be done. And we have to do it. He said, this one will be blessed in what he does. Yeah. See, see, here's what I love about God. He's a rewarder. The Bible says he's a rewarder to them yeah. who do what? Yeah. Diligently yeah. seek him. Yeah. Yeah. That means you got to put some oomph behind. Yeah. Come on. You can't be all lackadaisical with God. Whoa, I would that you'd be hot or cold. Come on. Let's go to the next slide. James 1, 24, uh, out of the passage translation, I just want to uh, uh, highlight this point. He says, you perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word, but then you go out and forget your divine origin. Here it is. You just got born again. You a new creature in Christ Jesus. You've been restored back to your divine origin. And you done forgot already. You go right out the door and let the devil trick you and trap you with little pettiness. Listen, I'm the pettiest person you probably will ever meet. You have no idea just how petty I can be. And I've been so delivered, y'all. I mean, because the stuff, the pettiness is still there. I just refuse to acknowledge it or file for the okey doke. So, so, so. I'd have missed my whole blessing right here, baby, if I had to follow old Janine. Old Janine was a whole fool. I'm telling you, stupid and dumb and crazy. And preaching all at the same time. Oh, oh, I tell on me. I ain't scared to tell the truth on the name. Oh, child. He could have showed up five years before he did. I was preaching and dumb and crazy. Come on. Come on. Need much help to shut down the pettiness of it all. Ooh. I didn't talk about sin, y'all. I'm just talking about preference. Ooh. I'm just talking about preference because some of us prefer stuff that's no good to us. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. I said, I ain't talking about sin. Uh -huh. I'm just talking about preference. Why well, you need to get your mind right? So, uh, so I hope my I hope my life testifies to some of these single women in the room. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know how these are spoken for. I think it's a few, it's a couple of y'all. But the bottom line is, don't let your preference trip trap you. Don't let it trick you. Okay, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because what God might have for you might be packaged a little different than you anticipate. And you'll miss God if you're looking in the eyes of the flesh. Come on. I'm just telling you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying. My baby, he, he look, he feel the same way. I, I always laugh and tease him and say, baby, just imagine you being on the farm. Come on. And somebody just come and walk up, walk at 18, when you was 18, 18 years and 20. Somebody, if you 18 years old. And somebody come and walk up and bring you this little brown baby and say, this is going to be your wife. <laughs> he like, I said, get that. Hey, get out of here. It, it would have been impossible for him to even conceive. You know, he does that even right. Absolutely. You know, five years before we met, he was probably was in the same condition I was. Just would have missed God completely. Yeah. Ooh, but he's so gracious and so faithful. Yeah. <laughs> And I rejoice every day in my man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Chase. I'm just saying. Don't forget your divine origin. Don't forget that when we repented, we went back to the top. We went back to the high place. We went back to our origin. Hallelujah. We went back to the penthouse. Because pent means high. Yes. And it actually means the highest place. That's where you get the word pinnacle. Come on, that's right. Okay, it means the high place. So when we repent, we ain't just sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. But we're turning yeah. back to God's that's origin. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. The word tells us who we really are. Yeah. Yeah. Salvation restores us back to our divine origin. Mm -hmm. The word reinforces this knowledge and acting on it. Adding faith to what we have heard solidifies it in our core being. Yeah. Here's what I've learned in my life. The more I obey the word in the small things, right. 
the more strength God's give me and that I'm able to deal with the bigger things, all right? You know, when I lost my son, the pastor that I was serving under at that time, he said, boy, he said to the people, he said, this right here, for her to be standing, we was in, a, in, the, in my son's funeral at the time, he said, I have witnessed something that I've never seen before. He said, and this is proof that if you walk with God, you know, in your time of trouble, your worst times, he will He will keep you. Because some of y'all don't know that I preached the day my son died. It was already on the books. It was already scheduled, had been scheduled for months. And and, and I knew that, that it was not a, a, a surprise to God that the days had aligned themselves. It was no surprise, but there was something out of this alabaster box yeah. that he wanted to pour upon yeah. the people. That's right. And I refused to let grief. Mm. And not that I did not grieve, of course I did. Amen. I refused to let grief arrest me to the point that I could not glorify my oh, God. Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. That's it. Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Do not forget that these are defensive armor that God has given us so that we will not fall prey to the devil's strategies against us. Understanding what Jesus paid for and gave to us is of the utmost importance. But we do not fight for our kingdom rights in this existence. We have laid our, but if we do not fight, we have laid our armor down and surrender ourselves to the enemy's every will. Because there is no neutral ground, you guys. Amen. Either you fight and That's win, right. or Amen. you don't fight and you lose. That's right. For the person who would say, well, spiritual warfare is just not for me. Well, I'm going to say, you go ahead and get your butt kicked. You, you go ahead and keep surrendering your goods to the enemy. You don't plan on being a part of the occupying kingdom. Come on. That you you done made a decision that you gonna sit behind the lines and let the, uh, the let let the others do the work, yeah. but you won't reap the harvest. Wow. Come on, you won't reap my harvest. <laughs> Come on, you will not reap my harvest. Glory to God. We all could reap a much greater harvest if we will make a decision that we're not gonna take down for the enemy. Amen. I'm just not. You know, and part of taking down is choosing to remain ignorant. Yes, ah. All right? Come on, it's yes, choosing God. that when a class like the Battle of the Altar on, showed man. up and you made a decision not to come. Come on, oh, that's it. Well, that's it. When you decided not to come, yeah. what you decided was that I don't need that part. And so whatever they got, whatever that is, uh -huh. I, I, I ain't going to be able to gain from it. On, because here. because you can't get it by yourself. That's, right. that's, that's the that's the key. Amen. We can't get it by ourselves, baby girl. Right. As much as we try to, much as we want to, that's why I tell folks you can't laugh on Facebook if you ain't in firm and ain't able to get to church. You should be in somebody's house. You, if you, I mean, if you if you at work, I understand. But even with that, if you keep believing God, He will get your schedule changed. Right. I know what I'm talking about. Right. Woo! You gotta want it. Yeah. You gotta truly, truly want it. And God will make a way. Yeah. All right. So let's go to the next slide. God. Next. Other way. There we are. God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. If you read that entire chapter, 2 Peter chapter 1, it really brings, takes you back to how to live saved, how to live holy, how to have, how to have the fruit of the Spirit birthed out of you. That's right. Amen. It really is about your soul right. condition. But the point I want to bring out is the fact that everything that we need to please God is already in us. Amen. Yeah. By the, By the Holy Ghost. Everything that we need to please God and to fulfill our calling and assignment, every assignment, you got everything that God ever dreamed for you, you are already equipped inside of your heart to fulfill it all if you tap in. Yeah. We have the power to experience all the promises of God through his living word. Yes. Yeah. 
He did everything necessary to secure us on the cross. And can I tell you this? I just had to throw this in here. God is blameless. He did. He didn't do it. He didn't let it. <laughs> it's not his fault. Don't let the devil trick you into blaming God for your loss, your sickness, your defeat. Come on, none of your trouble came from God. It's no such, it's no such thing in heaven. There is no trouble in heaven. Amen. Come on, there is no fear in heaven. There is ain't none of that in God. Amen. All right. You got an enemy against your soul. That's right. Amen. Who? How can Amen. you believe in God in a heaven but not believe in a devil and his angels? Explain that to me. Explain that, Christian believer. <laughs> You know, you, because I've heard some of the strangest, craziest stuff I was supposed to be saved for the mouth. Come on, supposed to be. You know, supposed to be. Yes. You you didn't receive Jesus, but that's as far as you went. You entered into the door. Yes. But you have yet to access the kingdom of God. Oh my God. And, the, and the bottom line is that we blame God for everything. Yeah. And we, we act like there is no devil. That's, that's and you hear unbelievers say stuff like, well, if there was really a God, why is there so much suffering in the world? Because the church haven't taught well that there is an enemy against our soul and against all of humanity. And that and we haven't come up into the place where we actually able to do what we teach it right now. And that is to be uh, fully girded with the whole armor of God so that we can do the things necessary in order to bring healing and salvation to the nation. Amen. This is what the body of Christ is called to do, and she will. Yeah. And she will. Yeah. And we will. Yeah. Ha -ha. There's a promise in Ephesians chapter 4 that we're going to come into a uh, one knowledge of God, one faith. Come on. One representation of who Christ is in the earth realm. This is all going to happen before he cracks the sky. Yeah. The king is coming. Yeah. I said the king is coming. Yeah. But he's coming in us yeah. before he comes to us. Yeah. Come on. And we will be the full, complete representation of Christ on the earth before Christ come again. Yeah. And all of those answers will be, all of those questions will be answered in us. Yeah. Let's go to the next slide. I'm almost there, y'all. Prayer is the next step and consistent armor we must wear to walk in the victory that Christ won. Matthew 11 and 12 out of Philip's Bible says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been taken by storm, and eager men or passionate people are forcing their way into it. In other words, the kingdom just don't happen to you. Come on, you press into the kingdom of God. And you do it with violent force. You don't have to be a, a violent person, but there needs to be a passion and a strength on the inside of you that refuses to settle for anything less than God's very best for you. I want everything. Come on. A uh, 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 bishop uh, to the Bismarck priest that don't mean count me. I want it all. I want it all. And listen, we ain't talking about only material things. I will include prosperity as it relates to having a good home and a, ni a, a, a nice place to live and having material blessing and being able to be a blessing to others. Absolutely. But I'm talking about that peace that passes all understanding. Come on, I'm talking about that joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm talking about a whole healed body. Oh, do y'all see? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I said a whole healed body. Why I got on some heels today? The first heels I've been able to wear since I broke my leg. Oh, talking about restoration. Come on, thank you, Jesus. I'm so excited that you don't even have to throw away the shoes, she said. My God, my God, my God. But healing. Yeah. Mental. Spiritual. Emotional. Physical. Hallelujah. He paid for it all. And I want all of mine. 
and I'm going to fight for my family. I'm going to fight for my friends. Come on, I'm going to fight for my community. Come on, people. I'm going to fight for my region. Hallelujah. And I'm especially going to fight for the saints. Come on now. Woo! We must war our way into the kingdom of God. Oh, my, 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 she, my, my, si, taya. Breakthrough is to destroy the barriers of second heaven strongholds and blockades. I say breakthrough is when you destroy the barriers of second heaven strongholds and blockades against your life. This is what breakthrough is. What you're breaking through. When you say I got a breakthrough, this is what you're saying. That I destroy. Come on. By the power of the Holy Hallelujah, by the word of God, come on, through prayer and supplication and fasting and declaring and decreeing, I have broken through second heaven barriers, come on, I have broken through those strongholds and blockades that have come against my life. Get a clue. Uh, Put some context around woo, your Christianity yeah. or your churchianity talking stuff. You know all of the nice things to say and don't even know what you're saying half the time. Uh, and the devil know whether you know or not. Come on. Woo yes, done. This is done by prayer. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Yes. She but our prayers cannot be begging, pleading, oh. Complaining prayers. You're not praying if you begging God. You begging. That's not what prayer is. You're not praying if you pleading and complaining. If you pleading, you better be pleading the blood. <laughs> complaining is not a prayer. It's murmuring. And God don't like it. That is unnecessary. It's truly unnecessary. What does the word of God say about your situation? Let me tell you something. Some of the most one of the most practical things you ever can get is either you go get one in the physical, find you one at uh, on Amazon.com or in somebody's Christian bookstore, or you download an app which is called the Bible Promise Book. All it is is an app or a book that separates the scripture out by uh, circumstance. Yeah. So if you if you if you're angry, they give you the list of scriptures. If you're sad, they give you the list of scriptures. If you're happy, they give you the list of scriptures. If you need healing in your body, they give you the list of scriptures. There is no aspect of life or no emotional uh, uh, circumstance that you can't find in the list. And when you find it now, you you take that scripture and you begin to pray it into your life. Stop complaining to God. Go get the word on it. What does the word of God say? That's the only thing you need. You don't need, he, he already know what to say. I'm going to say, can I tell y'all another pet peeve that I have, y'all? I told y'all not a lot. <laughs> I just can't stand when people be praying and telling God what the circumstance is. <laughs> Lord, we going through so bad right now. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you telling that to God? He knows. <laughs> what does his word say? He said, put me in remembrance of my word. That's right. What does the word of God say? Did he do it? Yeah. No, I just told you, you can't blame God for this craziness going on in the world. Amen. So you don't need to tell him, Lord, Tommy is going through real bad right now. We really need you to touch Tommy. Now, I understand that the old saints didn't know that because they may not have been learned, uh, in, in other words, educated. Some of them couldn't even read. You know, and God will honor the heart of a person at whatever place they are. And I'm talking about these people in this room who sit up on a solid word every week. You have no reason to be praying, little, little, little mousy pamsy, you know, uh, crybaby prayers. You need to get the scriptures and you need to apply those scriptures to your life and apply them. If Johnny going through, the first part you need to do is, is search your mind, use your cerebral cortex, okay, your brain, 
and figure out exactly what's his problem. If you don't know, guess what you need to do? All right. Pray in the spirit. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the reason why we pray them little man's and cancer yeah. prayers, because we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And you can't get no revelation about how to pray unless you pray in the spirit first. But our prayers cannot be begging, pleading, complaining prayers. Praying always with all prayer means, number one, that your prayer must be of the Spirit of God, meaning pray the Word of God only in the matter. Amen. Come on. Amen. And number two, prayer must be in the Spirit through the gift of prophecy and the gift of tongues. Amen. I will not take it back. Tongues is for all believers. Amen. Tongues is necessary in order to gain the victory that Jesus paid the price for. Yeah. You gotta pray in the spirit because the, 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 the spirit searches all things right. and is able to pray things that you would never know in your natural mind. Yeah. It also divorces your emotion from your prayers. Yeah. It also is secret prayer that is only understood between the Holy Spirit and God the Father and the devil can't get in the mix. He can't talk to you about it. Yeah. He can't talk to his henchmen about it because it's a mystery. Yeah. When you pray in the Spirit, you pray in mystery. Yeah. And then what keeps saying is you begin to, after you've prayed in the Spirit for a while, next thing you know, it's some strip that's built up. Next thing you know, you prophesying. Yeah. And you don't even know you could be interpreting your tongues as you're praying because now yeah. you're praying in your, your known language, but you're praying powerful prayers. Yeah. You're saying words you never would have put Ooh, together. Wow. You're saying things that you never would have yeah. thought of because why? Holy Spirit went ahead of you and other groanings yeah. that you could not even understand. Yeah. And then now you're able to pray with precision. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God, today. Look at me thinking I'm nothing because I ain't. All I know how to do is pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Any and everything you think I could have, that I am, I prayed in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I prayed in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And I prayed for hours and hours yeah. and hours. Yeah. Years. Oh my God. Years and years and years. Glory to God. On the back side of a mountain. Oh, yeah. Pressing into Him. Yeah. Yeah. Pressing into Him. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, and I don't regret one moment. I don't regret one moment. You can't prophesy without the Holy Ghost. And you can't prophesy. I ain't never seen a prophet that did speak in tongues. You? You? I ain't never met one. I, you, you ain't got a word from the Lord without the Holy Ghost. You, you, you just don't. Glory, glory to God. Let's go to the next one. I think it's the last one. Pray in the spirit. Prayer in the spirit is supernatural. Yeah. This what this what this what frightens a whole lot of the body of Christ. Because praying in the spirit or praying in other tongues is something that they don't control. Yeah, well, I should say you don't control the language, but you control your mouth. That's right. You know, uh, I only pray when I want to pray. Yeah. Now, there are some times that the Holy Spirit will stir me, right. but I have to yield. Yeah. I say I have to yield. Yeah. If I don't yield to his stirring, then he's a gentleman. He's just going to find somebody else to intercede. Right. Hallelujah. Right. And then you just miss what God wants to bless right. you with. Right. Come on. If you let him go on by, you know. And, and, and I've heard people say, well, you know, it just sounds so, uh, I sound so childlike, or I can't think of no more words. First of all, when you pray in the Spirit, you're not thinking of words. All right? Amen. you just letting the Holy Spirit flow, and you're saying whatever you hear. And as it comes out, the more practice you become, the more uh, eloquent, come on, or the more uh, 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 words will be added to your Holy Spirit prayer. What I sound like now is not what I sounded like at 18 years old when I first got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And I, I know for a fact that my tongues have changed twice yeah. dramatically in my walk with God. Yeah. And I believe that that have to do with elevation yeah. and shifting into a, next, a new place in God. Yeah. 
but you still need to pray in the spirit. If I'm going to tell you, so much of the drama that we have in our flesh and things that we can't seem to shake, so many appetites and, you know, proclivities and, and mindsets that we have, if you would spend 30 minutes a day praying in the spirit, that thing will fall off you like dry skin. I swear I know what I'm talking about. You don't realize how easy it is to be delivered when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in other tongues on a very consistent basis, and it is discipline. You must do it. You must do it. It's discipline, and it's the best discipline. It's the best. Being baptized in the Holy Ghost is, is for me, hands down, the best thing that ever happened to my life. I said yes to him. He filled me with his spirit. I went down in uh, baptismal waters with a with a mind that I was going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I was going to speak in some tongues, and I came up out that water and did. And I've been rolling with God ever since. And and, and as much as y'all have heard me testify about how I was in and out and up and down and in and out and up and down, that was me having to work out my own soul salvation in fear and in trembling. But when it comes time to deal with the anointing, the knowledge of God, the word of God, uh, expressing the word of God or prophesying, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, or in studying and learning the word of God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the best thing that ever happened. Ever to me. And I would never let somebody tell me that it ain't real or that I, I sat through Bible college and they tried to tell me they was a bunch of Baptist folk that the gifts of the Spirit and the fivefold ministry was for the first church and not for the rest. But Jesus said he the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He said, I am God and I change not. What he did for them, he's doing for us and more. The works that I do, you shall do these and greater works shall you do. What he, what do they think he talking about? Because Jesus cast out the devil. Jesus healed the sick. Jesus raised the dead. So what, what, did, what? Religion. <laughs> Religion, doctrines of demons. Romans 8, 26 says, the spirit of God not only maintains this hope within us, but helps us in our present limitation. Yeah. Come on, y'all. For example, this is Dr. Phillips' Bible. For example, we do not know how to pray worthily as sons of God. But his spirit within us yes. is actually praying for us, not silently. Ah. But when we open our mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. In those agonizing longings which never find words, natural language. Amen. And God knows the heart's secrets, understands, and of course, the Spirit's intention as He prays for those who love God. So when we're praying, the Holy Spirit is praying through us. And He's praying the secrets the understandings and the intentions of God concerning us and whomever else we're praying about. These are our gifts. I got one more slide, y'all, and I'm done. Hallelujah. Let's go to the last one. Praying in the spirit is supernatural. And it is also necessary for if you really want true breakthrough. Jude 1 20 says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Let's look at it on the, I think it's the Passion Translation. It says, but you, my delightfully loved friends, constantly and progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith by praying every moment in the spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Stand to your feet. We're going to practice this praying in the spirit situation. There's many who will be watching and want to ask the question, you know, the scripture says that it's better for you to prophesy than to pray in a bunch of tongues. That's true. If you're in a room full of unbelievers, but that's not what this is. Glory to God. 
and we are a presence driven ministry we are not a people driven ministry and so we care more about the presence of God and what he's trying to do in and through us than we care about people we believe and I don't mean we don't care about people what I do mean is that uh, when we invite his presence in the room he changes people. We don't have to. Amen. Hallelujah. So we do what we know to do, and that is to get in his presence and begin to uh, uh, comprehend that we are at the very throne of God. We close our eyes, come on, and we lift up our voice, and we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and utterances that we have not ever uh, uh, done before. If you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, you never, ever spoke in tongues, please come to the altar. We're going to help you today. We're going to lay hands. We believe that Holy Spirit is well able. Um, it, it's really a faith issue. It's not anything that has to happen, uh, uh, you know, specially. You know, I've heard people say, you know, the devil don't do, uh, God don't dwell in an unclean temple. Let me tell you something. Your spirit, if you've been born again, it is not, it is not unclean. Hallelujah. And so he will come and sup with you as you, if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he's already living and making his abode with you. But what he wants to do is not give you a thimble for, but he wants to fill you to overflowing with his spirit. And this is what praying in the spirit does. This is what praying in other tongues. Does. It fills you to overflow it. it gives you a new power and a new strength and an ability to obey God and an ability to walk with him and ability to say uh, an ability to say no to sin. Hallelujah. You've been struggling and struggling and trying to not do this and not do that. And I can tell you that being baptized in the Holy Ghost will give you the ability and the strength to, to literally say no because it will quench the appetite. It will quench the desire. So let us pray. Glory to God. Shalamasi talarabasia. Ido rosha tanamasi kederele boshita. Nani raya kalaraka sita namasho to boshiata. Ido rusha tanamasi. Come on and pray, saints. Ido boshita. Ida basi kederele mosha talarabasi. We love you, Jesus. Oh, baptize us again. <laughs> baptize us again. 